face, I could tell you to imagine that you're on a walk in the forest. Or I could say, look at, us, at those lights. And imagine that you were sitting here in the morning and seeing a spider going up and down all the while people were presenting. That's what happened this morning. Spiders are amazing. And that's why I do research on spider silk. So it's one of nature's strongest materials. And it even outcompetes Kevlar, which is the strongest man-made fiber of today. So when you look at how strong a material is, you look at the tensile strength and how much it stresses it, uh, stress it. And that will give you the toughness. So spider silk is more than three times as tough as Kevlar, which we use for bulletproof lead. It has also uh, a number of amazing properties. It's biodegradable, and it has been used in traditional medicine for wound healing. And it has also been used in peripheral nerve regeneration. So in one study, two centimeters of the sciatic nerve in that was removed and replaced by spider silk. And the nerve regenerated. The nerve started feeling good again. So spiders, uh, so researchers have been trying to make artificial spider silk fibers in the lab for quite some time now. But no one has been able to actually spin silk fibers. And the question is if spiders can do it for us. Well, spiders are cannibalistic and territorial, but you could try. So you could put them into one of these machines and reel their silk onto spools, after which you can make a scarf. So it would take you 70 people, four years, and a million spiders to make a scarf, which is around one by three meters. So that is obviously not working. So people have been producing spider silk proteins in bacteria instead. But as I said, no one has been able to make spider silk fibers. So we turn to nature and look at how the experts, the spiders, spin this silk. So we started with looking at morphology of spider silk glands. So the spider silk proteins are produced in abdominal glands of spiders. And we looked at the morphology of these glands and found something really surprising. So in the 70s, Yvonne Marie de Stolle here at SLU developed a method to look at an enzyme, which is called carbonic acidity. So this is a hysteresis in a plastic embedded section of one of these glands. And what you're looking at is a single epithelial cell layer with a lumen at the top. And the black staining is active carbonic anhydrase. So as some of you may know, carbonic anhydrase is an enzyme which regulates acid-base balance in tissue. So, hmm, acid-base. Well, then we decided to measure the pH in this gland. And we found that there is a really broad pH gradient, going all the way from pH 8 down to pH 5. And we then decided to study what happens with the proteins that make up the silk fiber in this range of pH. So spider silk proteins are, are, consist of three different parts. A repetitive region, which confers the mechanical properties to a silk. So it decides if it's a strong fiber or an extendable fiber, or maybe both. The NC and the CC are two terminal domains, and these turn out to be the sensors of pH, so they react to pH. So at a high pH, we have proteins just lying around in solution, feeling good. And as pH is lowered, the NC and CC, which are the sensors of pH, they change their structure so that the protein changes into a long protein chain that will eventually form a fiber at the end of the gland. So knowing this, we turn to the lab and ask ourselves how we can spin biomimetic spider silk fibers. And once upon a time, my supervisor Anna, she went to South Africa to gather a spider, which is called Euprostenops australis. And she collected the DNA from these spiders and put it into bacteria, which we then culture in flats, and we can then purify and concentrate this protein to the same extreme concentration as in the spider silk gland. And then we mimic the spider silk gland with glass capillaries. And for the, well, the second time ever now, I'm able to show you some really cool videos how we can spin spider silk fibers in the lab. So we get continuous fibers that we can roll up onto frames. And we can get up to 50 meters of spider silk fiber in one minute. We can then use this material for a bunch of cool stuff. So if you look carefully in this slide, you will see beating cardiomyocytes that are grown on a spider silk scaffold. So we have used human pluripotent stem cells and differentiated them into cardiomyocytes that beat spontaneously. 
So in the future, you might walk around with a heart made of spider silk and doing bungee jumps from one of those fibers. Thank you.